Some laws of nature seem, well, fundamental. The sun rises in the east, lions hunt antelopes, and trees grow from the bottom up. Everything is simple and clear. And then you find out that frogs eat snakes. Really? Ain't that supposed to be the other way around? But American bullfrogs are like, ha, come to Texas. We'll show you what's what. Bullfrogs are considered one of the largest frog species on the planet, up to six inches long and weighing about a pound. And that's just an average bullfrog. Bullfrogs don't croak. They make a bellowing heard from far away, but not when the bullfrog is on the hunt. These nocturnal predators sit quietly in ambush waiting for a snake to crawl past, then they quickly lunge with their powerful hind legs. Got it! The prey's trapped in a huge frog mouth. Try explaining to the bullfrog that it's the snakes that are supposed to eat them, not vice versa. While some snakes end up as a frog snack, others offer a ride to cane toads, mice, and beetles to save them from the flood. You can sometimes see that in Australia when both olive pythons and eastern brown snakes are used as emergency taxi service. That is, species that usually feed on their passengers. Perhaps it was a very selfless thing to do, or maybe the snakes just scheduled dinner for later and took it with them. Well, you know, takeout is usually cheaper than delivery. Let's head to Latin America, where scientists found one of the strangest fish known to humans in the mangroves. Mangrove rivulus is usually 0.4 to 1.5 inches long, lives in muddy pools and flooded crab burrows in mangrove swamps, or inside logs, on land. Yes, this fish lives on land and can stay out of water for not just half an hour or a day, but up to 66 days in a row. Of course, this happens during the dry spell, otherwise it wouldn't get there. It's pretty hard to pull off something like that when you're a fish, but these ones nail it. They modify their gills to retain water and nutrients, and waste products like nitrogen are excreted through their skin. As soon as the water returns, the fish rolls back to the previous buildup. Actually, this species is very territorial, but when it has to live through a drought, the fish curbs its aggression. After all, it can be a little crowded in the logs. By the way, they don't need a partner to breed and also make cool jumps. Yes, right on the ground. When you live on land for two months, you gotta get around somehow, right? The next stop on our journey is Bacoli, Italy. Early in the video, I said that trees usually grow from the bottom up. At the ruins of Bea, an ancient Roman resort, things work a little differently. There's a fig tree growing upside down right from the ceiling of the arch, which is actually an architectural site. They say this arch was part of the villa owned by the Emperor Nero, but he probably wouldn't know why the tree broke the laws of physics. Moreover, I didn't find any reliable information about this fig tree, neither how it ended up in the arch or how it survived, but it continues to grow upside down. It even seems to be bearing fruit. How about the fruits on the trunk? In the south of Brazil, there's a place where you can find jabuticaba tree, but only in the states of Minas Gerais, Goiás, and Sao Paulo. You can find round, dark berries that seem stuck to the trunk only in season for just a few weeks when the tree bears fruit. The berries have a thick skin and a very sweet center. Yeah, you can eat them. I was ready for something dangerous and quite poisonous, but they say these berries are delicious. They're mostly eaten fresh, but the fruits begin to ferment just three to four days after they're picked. So you have to do it fast or make jam out of them. Bake a pie. Look, I'm already drooling. What's next on the script, Steve? All right, so mosquitoes. Mosquitoes that live everywhere. Elephant mosquitoes are quite large. You can find them in forests. They prefer to stay active during the day. They're surprisingly beautiful for mosquitoes. No, seriously, just take a look at them. I've never seen such beautiful bloodsuckers. Maybe it's because elephant mosquitoes don't actually drink blood. Adult insects subsist on carbohydrate-rich substances, like the liquid waste that aphids secrete. The juice of damaged plants, fruits, nectar, and even refuse are on their menu. In short, they don't eat anything even close to blood. They don't even want to try. Why risk your life when you can find a peach? It definitely won't swat you. But the larvae of these mosquitoes hunt the larvae of other mosquitoes. You get it, right? Elephant mosquitoes actually help humans, and they're good at it. The larvae, as it usually happens, are very voracious. Just one elephant mosquito larva can eat up to 5,000 larvae of other mosquitoes before it matures. This can take from a few weeks to six months. Can you imagine how many dangerous larvae they can destroy over this time? 
Since we mentioned larvae that usually live in water, it's time to move to India, the native land of water buffaloes. By the way, about 90% of these animals live in Asia. These are really large bulls that can weigh up to 2,600 pounds and grow to almost 10 feet. Most importantly, water buffaloes love water. While everyone knows that hippos spend most of their time in the water, you don't expect such behavior, well, from relatives of cows. The answer lies in the sweat glands. Water buffaloes have too many of them, especially for their size. They're less tolerant of direct sunlight, which means they can die from heat exposure. Water buffaloes need constant cooling and they realize this, so they don't go far from the water willingly. Some prefer deep water, some simply roll in mud pits, which they dig using their horns. Water buffaloes have wide hooves and special structure of the joints to avoid getting stuck in the mud or silt at the bottom of the ponds. If you've ever swum in a place like this, you realize this could happen, especially if you're a buffalo, a big and heavy animal. Also, when water buffaloes are really hungry, they simply dive to the bottom and eat what they find there. I think that's probably grass, but still, I wouldn't dive in a pool with a hungry water buffalo. Better safe than sorry. And if you think water buffaloes don't live up to their name, here's a story for you. During a flood in the Philippines, a farmer was able to get out by riding a water buffalo. Apparently, this animal doesn't care what's around it, a lake or dirty water after heavy rains. The farmer also took a cow with him. But let's leave the water and add some lava to this video. There's a lava cactus growing in the Galapagos Islands, and it looks, well, like a cactus. But it grows only on recent lava flows. Of course, even these cacti need the surface to harden first, cool down and all that. But still, most plants and animals wouldn't like this habitat. Remember Mordor? Doesn't look like a blooming valley, does it? But that's because Sauron simply didn't have lava cacti. They're not studied too well, but here's what I've realized. When cacti anchor themselves in cracks, the bacteria in their roots literally begin to eat the lava. This releases the beneficial minerals that help the cactus grow, and the cactus, in turn, provides food for animals. And even when the lava cactus dies, its work isn't done yet. The cactus turns into hummus. Well, where there's hummus, there's fertile soil for other plants. The only downside of the lava cactus is its shape. It looks like, well, your grandma might find it inappropriate. Okay, let's move on to more YouTube-friendly topics. In South Africa, there are slacker bees who refuse to work. Everyone thinks bees are arduous workers who are always busy. And this is actually quite true. Bees keep working all their lives. In a day, one bee can visit more than a thousand flowers. So by the evening, it's so exhausted it doesn't care about anything sweet or even about especially tasty flowers. Well, you know, this feeling when you're so tired that you just don't care about anything? A worker bee flies about 500 miles in its life. That's over five or six weeks. That's the limit beyond which lies only death. Of course, bees have rest when they sleep. It takes them about five to seven hours a day and the rest of the time they work. But not the cape honey bees. Thanks to a genetic mutation, they've learned to reproduce without a queen bee, simply by cloning themselves. And if there's no queen bee, then you don't have to work. These bees sneak into other beehives and lay their eggs there so that others can feed and care for their offspring. These larvae mature and grow almost as big as queens, and like queens, they can breed, which means they don't do any work. They just walk around the hive looking like they own everyone. This quickly results in the collapse of the hive, but before this happens, the cape honeybees have enough time to chill, and then they find another hive and leave their clones there. If you think weird things can only happen on Earth, check out Mars, where sunsets and sunrises are blue. Also, the sun looks very small from there. Though this is actually no mystery, Mars is farther away from it, so the sun appears only about two-thirds the size we see on Earth. What's with the color? Mars is known as the red planet. Its soil is rich in iron oxide, so it has a reddish hue. But when fine dust rises, blue light can penetrate the atmosphere much more efficiently than any other light. That explains the blue sunsets, since the atmosphere is different on each planet. On Uranus, for example, the sunset sky changes from blue to turquoise. And on Titan, one of Saturn's moons, 
The sky changes from yellow to orange and brown as the sun dips below the horizon. See you later.